India is an agriculture based country. Around three fourth of the population is engaged in agriculture. Now different farmers may have more or less land, money and access to information. Hence the size of the farm ranges from very small to a very large farm. It is simple to understand that farmers who have more money or resources will have better farming practices and agricultural technologies. So in simple terms we can say that more the inputs the better can be the yields. Depending upon the inputs the production practices can be of different types. For example like no cost production, a low cost production or a high cost production practices. But all these kind they are you know they can be managed or they can be increased by a number of crop production improvement strategies which are nutrient management, irrigation and cropping patterns. So all these strategies can help a farmer to increase the crop yields. Let's discuss the first strategy the nutrients management. So all living organisms need food to grow. Similarly plants also need food in the form of inorganic elements. Now these inorganic elements are called nutrients. There are 16 nutrients which are essential for plants. These nutrients are supplied to the plants by air, water and soil. So the air provides carbon and oxygen to the plants whereas water supplies hydrogen and oxygen to the plant and soil it supplies rest of the 13 elements to the plants. Now out of these 13 6 nutrients are required in large quantity by the plant and hence they are called macronutrients. Whereas the 7 nutrients they are required in only small quantities by the plant and hence they are called micronutrients. So basically you see that nutrients are divided into two major categories the macro and the micro. The macro they are required in the large quantities and besides carbon, hydrogen and oxygen they involve nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur etc. Whereas the micronutrients are those which are required in the small quantity and they are iron, manganese, boron, zinc, copper, molybdenum and chlorine. Now when a farmer grows crop in the soil again and again these nutrients they get depleted. So what would happen now? The deficiency of these nutrients affect various activities of the plant. For example like its growth, its susceptibility to diseases, reproduction etc. So what can a farmer do now? What can he do to regain these nutrients? The soil can be enriched by adding the nutrients again to the soil in the form of manures and fertilizers. Let's see these manures and fertilizers one by one. So first is the manure. Manures are the natural sources of nutrients. They supply nutrient in small quantity but they contain organic matter in large amount. They are prepared by the decomposition of plant waste and animal excreta. Let's find out what are the functions of manures. So firstly they increase the soil fertility by enriching the soil with nutrients and organic matter. 
the addition of organic matter helps in increasing various soil properties such as increasing the water holding capacity in sandy soil or the large amount of organic matter it helps in drainage and avoiding water logging in clay soil we have learned that soil contains a number of organisms for example like fungi bacteria earthworm etc so the organic matter it provides food to these organisms lastly manure it is a biological waste so it is a way of recycling the farm waste it helps in saving our environment from various chemical substances now based on the kind of organic material used the manures can be of various types and some of them are compost vermicompost and green manure let's find out what are these so compost compost is a mixture of decomposed organic matter it is prepared by simply putting the plant and animal waste in a pit and it is covered for a number of days finally we obtain the compost in it now this process of preparation of compost is known as composting next is the vermicompost so this is a process of degrading the organic matter in pits with the use of worms so these worms they increase the rate of decomposition of this matter now last is the green manure so it is prepared by cultivating some fast growing green manure crops like sun hemp guar cowpea etc so once these crops are cultivated they are now mulched into the soil while plowing so basically we see that green manure is used before sowing the main crops in the field these manure provide nitrogen phosphorus and organic matter to the soil they also protect the soil against erosion and leaching the next source of nutrients are fertilizers so fertilizers are commercially produced plant nutrients they majorly supply nitrogen phosphorus and potassium to the plants they result in higher yields in high cost farming but certain measures should be taken while applying fertilizers like things should be kept in mind such as time their dosage their post and pre application while applying fertilizers do you know sometimes these fertilizers do not get completely absorbed by the soil and in such cases they get washed away with excess water of irrigation when they reach any water body around them they cause water pollution so fertilizers should be handled carefully we have also learned that excess and continuous use of fertilizers may harm the soil fertility it is so because the organic matter is not replenished by the fertilizers in the soil also they harm the microorganisms present in the soil so for the optimum yields of the crop basically the short term benefits of fertilizers and the long term benefits of manures should be considered a different type of farming is available these days which provides the maximum benefit of the substances added to the soil but in this type of farming only organic substances are used and hence this type of farming is known as organic farming organic farming is a practice of raising unpolluted crops through the use of manures 
biofertilizers and biopesticides. Now this type of farming is combined with healthy cropping pattern to avail the crops with most available nutrients. So we can summarize the important points of organic farming as first there is no or very little use of chemical compounds such as fertilizers, pesticides or herbicides. Now since there is no use of chemicals hence there is no toxicity due to the polluted crops, water, soil or air. Biofertilizers such as nitrogen fixing organisms like blue green alga are used. Similarly biopesticides such as turmeric or neem leaves or maybe their extracts are used to kill or repel the weeds, insects, pests etc. Now, As we spoke about the healthy cropping, the healthy cropping are mixed cropping, intercropping and crop rotation. We will study these cropping soon. Moving ahead, let us see the advantages of organic farming. So firstly, it does not pollute any of the component of our environment. So it does not pollute land, soil, water or air. Next, it recycles the farm waste. And lastly, the soil fertility is preserved. So student, in this lesson you have seen that how the crop production can be increased by proper nutrient management. So you can provide the nutrients to the soil either by the use of various types of manures, fertilizers or by simply doing the organic farming.